How's it going everyone? Today we're going to cover creatine phosphate in a practice question. So pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll go through it. So creatine phosphate plays a critical role in energy metabolism, particularly in muscle cells. Which of the following best describes its primary function in the human body? To understand this, before we even go through the answer choices, it's important to know what the chemical function of creatine phosphate is. So creatine phosphate, and then on the same side of this chemical equation, we're going to have ADP. And then there's going to be this reversible enzyme called creatine kinase. And then on the right side of the equation, we have creatine. So where did that phosphate go? Well, we actually put it on ATP there. Okay. So basically, creatine kinase is this reversible enzyme, and a kinase is something that's going to phosphorylate something. So basically, we're just passing this phosphate back and forth from left to right here. The question is, why do we have this mechanism? Why are we just passing this phosphate back and forth? Well, we have to think about the different energy conditions in our body. So when we have conditions of energy where we don't rapidly need ATP, creatine kinase is going to favor taking creatine and putting it in this creatine phosphate form. This acts as sort of a storage form so that when we have a short burst of energy, like running a 100 meter sprint, bench pressing for a few reps, etc., we're going to take this phosphate and be able to rapidly take ADP and create ATP. And it's classically in this two to eight second period of intense muscle activity. And you'll see different sources say kind of different time ranges, but for the sake of argument, let's say two to eight seconds. Creatine is gonna act as a phosphate storage to be able to create more ATP after all that ATP that's hanging out on the inside of the cell has already been used up. So it's really that two day second period. That's why people supplement with creatine. So if we supplement with creatine, we'll increase this side of the equation and by Le Chatelier's principle, which is a major NCAT concept. So Le Chatelier's principle, if we increase the products on any one side of the chemical equation, we're gonna drive it to the other side so taking creatine allows us to build up our creatine phosphate stores so that when we're bench pressing or sprinting or what have you, we're able to rapidly create more ATP and we might be able to get another few reps on the bench press or shave off a few milliseconds on a 100 meter dash. So let's go through the answer choices. Mobilizing glycogen breakdown in cardiac muscle? Not really. Creatine phosphate's all about ATP here. Uh, mobilizing glycogen breakdown in skeletal muscle, not really. Again, it's all about mobilizing ATP. And even though creatine kinase is going to be found in both of these tissues, it doesn't really have anything to do with glycogen. Next, regenerating ATP during short, high-intensity exercise. That's exactly what's going on. It's going to be this left-to-right function of creatine phosphate going to the right over here to make creatine and ATP. That's gonna be what's actually happening during short high intensity exercise. And then sustaining ATP production during prolonged aerobic exercise. We should know that's probably gonna be more a function of aerobic respiration, where we're performing glycolysis and then having the end product of glycolysis pyruvate go into the mitochondria. Mitochondria is gonna have the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, and then finally oxidative phosphorylation to make a much higher yield of ATP.